शून्यवारे पश्चाच्यधेशतारिने जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री वासुदेव गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वंशकौपतरुभ्यपिंदुवा पथितम भवान्ेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम Hare Krishna everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, let let's chant the invocation mantra and let's chant the invocation. Let's chant the invocation mantra and then we'll chant the first mantra because those are the two memorization verses for this this course. ओम पूर्णमदाचतेदा रुक्मिणी पति गो है ट्राई Maharaj, I have uh, not mastered the translation. Maharaj, oh. sorry, I cannot it. <laughs> okay, what about um, Kundalata Mataji? Yes, Maharaj, I try. The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete, and because he is completely perfect, <coughs> all emanation from him. such as is phenomenal world are perfectly equipped as complete world whatever is produced of the complete world is also complete in itself because he is the complete world mm, even though so many complete unit emanate from him he remain the complete balance yes very good yeah very good okay now mantra 1 is savashyam idam sarvam savashyam idam sarvam yat kincha jagat yam jagat yat kincha jagat yam jagat tena chakte na bunjata ट्रांसलेशन नंटीनी मारे जी यस Hello, Jai Maharaj. Everything animate and inanimate in this in in this universe is controlled and owned by the Lord. Therefore, one should only accept things which are set aside as his gota, uh, and one should not accept things unnecessarily, knowing which whom they belong to. Okay. Thank you. So can you tell me what's the first section of the Ishopanishad? Shri Ishopanishad, how does it begin? What's the first section and the in the overview of the 
the different verses. The, the first three mantras, what are they all about? It mentions about the proprietorship. That Krishna is the proprietor of everything. Yeah. And? And the laws of uh, God. What are the laws? We should not take more than the quota. What happens if we follow the law? When we can live for long. Yeah, we live a long life. Right? And what happens if we don't follow? We will suffer. Okay, we go to the darkest regions, yeah. Okay, good. And then the next section, who knows the next section after hearing about the proprietorship and the laws of nature? Text 4 up to text 8. What are they about? Someone else? Sankiras. Sankiras Madhaji here. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Do Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Do you, do you remember what, what's the next section of the Ishopanishad? Yes, Maharaj. Second section is uh, about vision of the Mahabhagavata. Yes. What's the vision? Mahabhagavata sees everyone in quality, same as the Lord. Yeah, in quality, one with the Lord. Yes. How do they see the Lord? What can you tell me some of the qualities of the Lord? Uh, he's omnipotent. Yeah. Om omniscient. Mm -hmm. I guess I cannot remember other things, marriage. Who who can tell me some more qualities of the Lord? Krishna is not uh, not formless. He has a spiritual form. Yeah, he he doesn't have a material form. He has a spiritual form. He has a form, but it's not material, right? Can you describe some of his activities? What does he do? Krishna can run faster than us than anybody else. Right. Yeah. He can overcome all others running. Even the powerful demigods, they cannot approach him. Yeah? And we, we were saying, he walks and he doesn't walk. He's far away. What else? He walks. And he doesn't walk. He's far away, but he is. He's far away, but he's very near. He's near as well. He's no, within. Yes, yes. He's within everything, but outside of everything. Yeah, he's within everything, but he's outside. So, how do we understand these statements? How can we understand them? These are the inconceivable potency of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, this is the Lord's inconceivable potencies. We try to understand with our limited material senses. We cannot understand. How can we understand the Lord? If we cannot understand Him with our limited senses, with our limited mind and our limited senses, how can we understand him? Punita. We can only understand him through the scriptures, through the revealed scriptures. Okay, we have to hear. Yes. And from the previous Acharya. Right. Yeah, we have to hear from the the scriptures and from the previous acharyas, we have to hear from people who are, what, what is their qualification? They should be 
realized. They should be realized, yeah. They should be dira, right? They should be sober, uh -huh. not disturbed. And we said the Lord also is shudam apapavidam, punita. Do you know the meaning? Shudam apapavidam. Sudam means um, anything that touches is purified. I mean, purified by the touch, pure, someone that's mm -hmm. pure. And the other one is antiseptic. Is it? No, the first one is antiseptic. Yeah. Punita is antiseptic. <laughs> um, Pavitram is antiseptic. And the Apapvidam is the prophylactic, prophylactic, A antiseptic and prophylactic. Prophylactic is your uh, power of association. Yes, prophylactic is means like, uh, just like if, if you take this medicine, then you won't get malaria. So it's prophylactic, it's malaria prophylactic. You take the medicine, it will protect you from getting malaria. So, because it's malaria prophylactic, you won't get the malaria if you take that medicine. So the same way Krishna is prophylactic. If we, if we, if Krishna is there, if we're with Krishna, there's no sin. There's no sin involved because Krishna cannot, he's protected, he cannot be sinful. Krishna is always transcendental. So we say uh, purified and uncontaminated. It cannot be contaminated. More simple language. It's purified, pavitra, purifying, and uncon cannot be contaminated, uncontaminated. Or antiseptic and prophylactic, antiseptic, you have a disease, you have something, infection, you put some antiseptic ointment on it and it will cure it. So pavitram, it, something is wrong, but Krishna will purify it. And then something else, it, do you, Krishna may be doing something, we may think it's wrong. No, because Krishna is prophylactic, he cannot be contaminated. Right? So these are some qualities of Krishna. So we spoke about these things. And we spoke about ekatvam anupashyataha. What does that mean? Remember, Panita? Ekatvam anupashyata? They are one in quality with the Lord. Okay, one in quality. What about quantity? Um, no, we are anu, small, whereas... What's the example? The Lord is... What's the example? Give some example to compare the Lord to the living entity, the qualities. How do you... What's the example? Sakiras. Sankhya Rasmataji, do you know? What example? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. What? Uh, the drop of water compared to the ocean. Yes, the drop of water in the ocean, right? Or another example? Drop of water compared to the ocean. The same quality, different quantity. We see also a speck of gold in a gold mine, <laughs> right? A little piece of, tiny piece of gold and one gold mine. Same quality but different quantity. Okay, so then what's the next part of the Ishopanishad, Sakya Rasmataji? After text 8, then we came to 9 to 13. 9, 10, and 11, and then 12, 13, 14. Oh, yeah. 9, 10, and 11, and then 12, 13, 14. There were two sections. What is that section all about? 
six verses. It's about absolute and uh, relative uh, knowledge. Only knowledge. What else? The first section was about knowledge. The second section was about... Yeah. Huh? It's about worship. Right. Worship, my Right. About Absolute worship. worship. About Relative worship. Right. Yes. Right. Worship. Right. Worship. And then, so we spoke about different kinds of knowledge, and we heard that uh, some people worship. Uh, some people uh, get knowledge. They have no. There's two kinds of knowledge, right? Right. So we have to cultiv cultivate both the vidya and the avijja side by side. How do we do that? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj, we can hear you loud and clear Maharaj. Okay, so we're back. All right, so um, we were talking about cultivating knowledge of Vidya and Avidya side by side. How do we get knowledge of Vidya and Avidya side by side? How do we cultivate both of them? Well, we, we get knowledge, but we, we take part in the spiritual program, right? In Krishna consciousness, we have a spiritual program based on hearing and chanting. So, the lifestyle of the devotee also help us to develop the good qualities, the purpose of education. Sakiras, what's the purpose of education, Maharaji? Yes, yes. Education is meant to produce, to do what? Just we have to pass exams, is it? We just no, to get knowledge, Maharaj. No. What kind? What kind of knowledge? Krishna conscious knowledge. Uh, no, we said, we said real education is to produce good character. Yes. To help people to have good character, right? Okay. The, mm -hmm. Yes. One who is devotee, they should be a person of very good character. They should be clean, they should be honest, they should be reliable. They should be truthful, like that. And at the same time, we have to know about Krishna, all right? Because we practice Krishna consciousness, so we have the habit, we like to wake up early in the morning, we like to chant Hare Krishna, all right? We like to also uh, be vegetarian, of course, we have to be vegetarian, we won't just eat anything and everything. And we should also give respect to other people. We offer our respects, we bow down to people. One devotee's mother came to temple, Prabhupada told him, bow down to your mother. <laughs> right? Mother was not devotee, but Prabhupada said, you bow down to your mother. And the, that devotee, he was a big man, you know, he was a big, strong man. And Prabhupada told him, you bow down to your mother. 
and he did it. So like that we learn humility, we learn to be humble and to give up pride, to develop good qualities, good character. That's how we cultivate avidya. Right? Cultivating avidya doesn't mean you go out and become a good karmi, go out and drink and gamble and eat meat and everything. No, it means to have good character. Right? And Krishna consciousness helps us to do that. Both, so we develop both the avidya and the vidya, both side by side, by being devotees. Okay? And then we spoke about worship. Right? Punita Mataji. Punita. What kind of right. what kind of worship is there? We were hearing about different kinds of worship. Who were we worshipping? Who can you worship? Some people worship who in Malaysia very common. Who do the Hindu worship? Mostly they worship. Lord Shiva Maharaj. The Devas, right? The Devas. The, some people worship Ganesh, some people Shiva, some people Mirama, like that, different. And some people, who, uh, Ayapa, right? That. <laughs> it's different. There's even the one, they smoke, he smokes cigarettes. I don't know who is, I forget the name. Anyway, many gods, 33 crore. Devas, and some people, they, they worship what? They don't just worship Devas, they worship the impersonal, they are impersonalists. They worship the Brahman, right? So do they all get the same result? It doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter who we worship, it's all the same, right? No. Really? It's not the same? I thought it was all the same. Really? Can you convince me it's not the same? Prove it. Can you prove it to me? It's not the same? Who can prove it? Kundalata. Hare Krishna Maharaj. If let's say we pray to the demigod, we will go to the heavenly planet. But the, so we, when we pray to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we will go back to Godhead, the okay. spiritual world. Okay. So it's a different. What's the verse? What's the verse? You told me yesterday. <laughs> Chapter 9, text 20. Hmm. Paritrana sadhunam vinas chaj dharma samstapanarta. No, no. Sambhavami you gave me. No, no, no. That's not the verse. No, not at all. There's a, the, the, there's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita that said, Yanti Deva Yata Devan, Pitrin Yanti Pitrin Vritaha, Bhutani Yanti Budeja, Yanti Madhya Janopi Mam. Right? The worshipper, worshipper of the Devas will go to the Devas. The worshippers of the Pitris will go to the Pitris. Pitri means what? Who are the Mitra Loka? Pitri is the, the forefathers. forefathers, right? forefathers and yes. Bhutani Yanti Buteja, who are they? Who are the Buddhas? Buddha, no. ghosts. Ghosts, ghosts, right. Yeah. You worship the ghosts, you go to their place also, right. But if you worship Krishna, you go to him. Also, Ishopanishad says, the Ishopanishad mantra said, one result is obtained by worshipping what is supreme, and another result is obtained by worshipping what is not the supreme. The mantra itself, we're studying there in the Ishopanishad says, you get one result by worshipping the Absolute and you get another result by worshipping something else. And Prabhupada gives a logical example. What example does he give? Madhutosi Mataji? 
Madhu Tosi? Yes, Maharaj, I'm here. What's the, what's the example Prabhupada gives? Logically, we don't get, it doesn't, it's not all the same, it's not all one. I'm not sure. You're not sure? We talk, we say, yeah. if you buy a ticket, if you're in, oh, yeah. right? What, what's the example? Yeah, I go to. Go ahead, tell me then. Uh, Just tell, do you remember? You don't remember? Are you trying to read it from the book? Just. Uh, uh, if you buy a ticket to go to Calcutta, uh, you will reach Calcutta and not Mumbai. Okay. Like yeah. Yeah. Right. Like that. Yeah. You get you, according to your destination, according to your worship, you'll go there. And then we spoke also about. Welfare programs, serving man is serving God. Some people say, oh, service to man is service to God. If you serve the poor people, that's real service to God. God was very happy. Right? So how, what's the example we give about this? Madhu Tosi, do you remember? Yes, Maharaj, it's about, uh, Maharaj was telling about Manu Seva is Madhava Seva. Is it? Really? <laughs> do you believe that? No, I don't believe that. You don't believe it? Really? What do you believe? Yeah. What do you believe? Um, serving the absolute or the supreme is the is the best. Yes, to serve the supreme is the best way to help the people, right? Help the people to become Krishna conscious. Right? What's the example? Tanusha. Tanusha Maharaji. Yes, Maharaj. Do you remember the example we give? People want to do welfare work. We tell them that it's like what? Welfare uh, It's like it's like if we water the root of the plant, it will be uh, more healthier. But if we water the other plants of other parts of the plant, it, it does not work much. Right. right. The, the plant die. So in that way, if we uh, serve, if we serve the Lord Krishna, who is the root of the, who is compared to the root of the plant. Yes. We will get, uh, we will attain Godhead. I mean, we will attain the kingdom of Godhead, but if we worship the other demigods who compare to the leaves of leaves, blood, and the branches of the plant, we will not attain the kingdom of Godhead. Okay. Correct, Maharaj? Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can't go back to Godhead just by worshipping the devas. We have to worship Krishna. Okay, we'll go ahead. We're going to. Go on to the next. Okay, this is mantra number 15, right? Can everyone see it? Yes, Maharaj, very clear. Maharaj. Okay, Rukmini Pati Prabhu, you can read. Okay, Maharaj. Iran Mayena Patrena. Iran Mayena Patrena. Tadyashyapi Hitam. Mukam Satya Shia Pilatam Mukam Tatum Pusan 
aparno tatwam kursana pavarno satya dharmaya drishtaye satya dharmaya drishtaye okay translation oh my lord sustainer of all that lives your real space is covered by your dazzling effulgence kindly remove that covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee okay so we're beginning the final section of the isha panishad and this is prayer to the lord praying to the lord you can see he's praying oh my lord right so he's praying that your i want your face is covered by the effulgence So please remove that covering. I want to see your your form. Go ahead, Prabhu. Read. Rukmini Pati. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Read. Read. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, chapter fourteen, text twenty-seven, the Lord explains His personal rays, Brahma Jyoti. The dazzling effulgence of his personal form in this way, Brahmano hi pratistha ham amrta shyau ya yasya chha sa swata shya cha dharma shya chuka shya ikhani kashya cha. I am the basis of the impersonal Brahmanish immortal imperishable fusional position of ultimate happiness. Brahman and Bhagwan are three aspects of the same Brahman. Is the aspect most easily perceived by those who have further progress, and Bhagwan realization is the ultimate realization of the absolute truth. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter seven, text seven, where Lord Krishna says that he is the ultimate concept of the absolute truth. Mata parantaram matnamyet. Therefore, Krishna is the source of the Brahma Jyoti as well as all pervading Brahma. Later in the Chapter ten, text forty-two. Krishna further explains, "Atava bahu ainte na kim nya te na tavar haduna vista dim tabahim idam pustam eka ke na siddha." But what need is? And enough for all this detailed knowledge. With a single fragment of myself, myself, I pervade his one planet expansion, the all-pervading cosmic creation, the whole spiritual world. Therefore, in this Shruti Mantra of Sri Ashokanishad, the Lord is addressed as Pusan, the ultimate maintainer. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Hari Krishna. All right, so let's look at this. Prabhupada is explaining to us, first of all, three three aspects of the absolute truth. The Lord is known in three different ways, right? Three different levels. Do you remember, Punita? Yes, Pr yes, Maharaj. What are they? Brahman. Yes. Paramatma and Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Bhagavan, right? Okay. So, who realizes the Lord as Brahman? What kind of people get to know Him as Brahman? The impersonalists. Yes, the gyanis, the impersonalists. They know the Lord as Brahman, right? And Brahman, what what is that Brahman? What is it? It is the effulgence or the rays that is emanating from the Lord. Right, it's the bodily effulgence, the rays, and it's a partic. It represents a particular potency of the Lord, right? The Lord 
is his form is that he he is Satchit Ananda. So this Brahman represents the Sat feature. The Sat feature. You know Sat what the meaning is? Sat? Eternal? Yes, right, eternal, right. So Brahman. So some people they know themselves as Brahman. They will say, Aham Brahmasmi, right? Do you know the meaning, Aham Brahmasmi? I am Brahman. Yes. So what, and what is Brahman? Is this the eternal feature of the Lord? The and, and, and where is it? You, if you are the Brahman, are you are you the eternal feature of the Lord? No. So where is it? If you say if someone Which, says Aham Brahmasmi, then where are they? What is it? What are they talking about? It means, Hare Krishna Maharaj, it means uh, I am part and parcel of Brahman. What, your body is part and parcel of Brahman? The soul, Maharaj, my soul is part and parcel of Brahman. Okay. Yes, the soul, talking, we're talking about the soul. The soul is part and parcel of the Lord. The soul. So we are, we can, we can all say aham brahmasmi, aham brahmasmi, right? It means I am not the body, I am Brahman. And that Brahman is a tiny, how do we compare it to, in relation to the Lord? We have, remember we, we said ekatvam anupashata, in quality, one with the Lord, different in quantity. Right? Are you hearing me okay? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, just so long as you're under, are you understanding? Can you understand? We, the, yes, Bra the Brahman is like a, it's like a big, big light, a big energy, or a, like a big fire. And what is the living entity? The living entity is a tongue. A tiny spark, right, a tiny spark. The spark has also the heat and the light, but not like the fire, right? So we are like that. That's our relationship with the Lord. We are the Brahman. Now for the jnani and for the impersonalist, this is the goal, to realize himself as Brahman. But for the devotee, it's not very important. We don't worry about it because we begin our devotional service like that. Okay, so Prabhupada said, Brahman is the aspect most easily perceived by the beginner. So devotee, new, new devotees, we know, aham brahmasmi, I am not the body, we're not the body. I'm a soul. Remember, ladies, when you look in the mirror, you can say, Aham Brahmasmi. You are not the body. Right? And then, Paramatma. Paramatma. Where is the Paramatma? Localized. Where? In all living entities. Yes, right. It's the, it's, it is, yes. In the heart of all living entities, right? And even in the atoms. Every, so the, this realization of Paramatma is realization the, of the chit potency. Sat chit. Chit is the knowledge that the Lord is everywhere in everything. So the, you get realization of the sat and the chit. Who realizes the paramatma? The yogis, Maharaj. The yogis. Okay. 
and then finally those who have, and those who are, who have realized the ultimate the, the full realization of the absolute truth they realize bhagavan so they know the lord oh, they get the bliss they get the ananda because they know the lord they come to know the supreme lord so they get satchit ananda the full realization of the lord right Prabhupada quotes Bhagavad Gita, Mata Parataram Nanyat, Bhagavad Gita, seven, seven. Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita, there is no truth superior to me. Everything rests on me. Just like the, the beads or the pearls are strung on a thread. So like that, Krishna is holding everything. You know, we have the neck beads, we have our neck beads on, right? Do you all have neck beads on? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, so you should have neck bead, but you, you don't see the thread, you only see the bead. But the thread is what holds all the beads together. In the same way, Krishna is holding everything in the universe together. But we don't see Krishna, but he's there holding everything. So this is... Krishna, He is the Absolute Truth, the source of the Brahma Jyoti, it comes from Him. So Prabhupada quoted in the beginning of the purport, Brahmano hi pratistaham, Krishna said, I, Krishna is the basis of the Brahman. Right? The, the Brahman is based, based on Krishna. It's not that Krishna, some people, the Mayavadis, they say Krishna is based on the, on the Brahman. They say the Brahman is the Supreme. And they say when Krishna comes, he's just a form of the Brahman. He came from the Brahman. So they say the other way. They say it different from us. And then Prabhupada quotes this verse from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, Vibhuti Yoga, opulences of the Absolute. Atava bahunaitena kim gyatena tava. What need is there, Arjun, for all this knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support the entire universe. What is that fragment? What is that fragment? Mary, do you, do you know? Mary? What is that fragment which pervades and supports the entire universe? I think, I think I don't remember, Mara. <laughs> oh, okay, Punita, do you remember? Is it the external energy of the Lord, the external potency of the Lord? Well, the whole material world is the external potency of the Lord. But there's a, 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 there's a special fragment, a particle of Krishna, by which he pervades and supports everything and maintains everything. What is that particle? Paramatma. The Paramatma, right, the Super Soul, Paramatma, the all-pervading Paramatma. We said, we, we, we said Krishna is everywhere, he's all-pervading, and by his all-pervasiveness, he can pervade and support the entire creation. So he is the ultimate maintainer, right, as the Paramatma. And the Paramatma is only a tiny fraction of Krishna. It's not Krishna directly, it's only his expansion. Okay, someone else can read. Punita, read, please. Haribo? Sorry, Maharaj, I was uh, on mute. I will read now, Maharaj. The personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, is always filled with transcendental bliss, Ananda Mayo Vyasa. When he was present at Vrindavana in India 5,000 years ago, he always remained in transcendental bliss, even from the beginning of his childhood pastimes. The killings of various demons, such as Aga, Baka, Putana, Pralamba, were but pleasure excursions for him. In his village of Vrindavana, he enjoyed himself with his mother, 
brother and friends. And when he played the role of a naughty butter thief, all his associates enjoyed celestial bliss by his stealing. The Lord's fame as a butter thief is not reproachable, for by stealing butter, the Lord gave pleasure to his pure devotees. Everything the Lord did in Vrindavana was for the pleasure of his associates there. The Lord created these pastimes to attract the dry speculators and the acrobats of the so-called Hapta Yoga system who wish to find the Absolute Truth. Okay. So, Krishna is always full of bliss, right? Ananda Maya Bayasat. We said Satchit Ananda, his body is Satchit Ananda, very blissful. So he likes to enjoy, he likes to have good fun, like all of us, right? We like to have a good time, we like to enjoy ourselves. So when Krishna came to Vrindavan 5,000 years ago, he had a lot of fun. He, he was having fun with the different demons. Mary, do you remember? Aga? Which demon was Aga? Aga, uh, Aga is, is the bird, is it the big bird? No. The, uh, no. Agasura. Agasura is the snake, the yes, big snake. Yes, a big snake, right. Aga, Aga, the word Aga means sin, means sin, it was a big sin. So, there's a big snake, right? He came with it. Yeah. He was miles long, very much. He was miles long, and he opened his mouth. It was like a big cave. And all the cowherd boys, they all went inside, right? Yes, Maharaj, yes. And then what happened? Mm. Uh, and then the, the boy, the cowherd, was saved by, by uh, Lord Krishna. How? By expanding himself very big until the snake was torn up. And still, until the snake what? Uh, torn, torn. He expanded himself. Yeah, Krishna was inside the mouth of the Aga demon, and Krishna made himself very big, and so then Agasura. Very big inside the. Then Agasura choked. He couldn't breathe anymore, right? Because Krishna was inside. So the Agasura died. And what about Baka? Baka that... is a bird, giant bird. Yeah, can you tell me what happened? Um, Krishna enters into the bird and expands himself also until uh, his burst. <laughs> Rip open. Krishna broke the beak of the Bakasura. Beak, he broke the beak. Yeah. yeah, he broke the beak. Long beak. Yeah. What about Putana, Mary? Do you know Putana? Ah uh, yes, he he disguised himself as Gopi and tried to feed feed baby Krishna uh, milk, but then. Uh, uh, Krishna sucked suck the, the milk until uh, Putana died. It's like sucking the soul, the soul of Putana. Yeah, he sucked out the life air. Uh, the, the life air from Putana. Yeah. And, and, Putana and then Putana yes. revealed herself to be a big witch, also very big, miles long. And what about Pralamba? Anybody know the story about Pralamba? Aga, Baka, and Putana, they're brothers and sisters. Putana is a sister, Aga and Baka are brothers. They're all from the one family. I don't, I'm not sure about Pralamba, but Pralamba is also mentioned. Pralamba was, he was killed by Lord Balaram. What happened was Pralamba came disguised like a cowherd boy. He pretended he was a cowherd boy and he came to play with the cowherd boys. So Krishna knew he was a demon, 
but he was coming disguised like a cowherd boy. So they began to play together and they had a game and whoever won the game, then there were two sides and the winning side, they were carried on the back of the losing side. So Krishna was on one side and Pralamba was also on the same side with Krishna and Balaram was on the other side. So Pralamba was fighting with Balaram and Pralamba lost. So Balaram got carried on the back of Pralamba. But Balaram is very heavy because Balaram holds up the universes. Balaram is Ananta Shesha. So Pralamba was carrying him and Pralamba was trying to run away with Balaram on his back. He thought he would run away with Balaram and then he would kill him. But he was running but Balaram became so heavy and Pralamba couldn't run. Then he, it, because he was so heavy, Pralamba had to re reveal his form as a big demon. So when Balaram saw he was a big demon, then Balaram killed him, he punched him and killed him. So this was all, this was all the game for Krishna and Balaram. In his village of Vrindavan, he was with his mother, right? Who was, Mary, do you remember the name of the mother of Krishna? Yeah, Yasoda, Maga Yasoda. Yeah, and what's his brother's name? Uh, ba Bara. Yeah, and do you know names of any of his friends? Uh, Su Subala. Yeah, Subala, good, yeah. And Sridhar and Subal. Okay. And that when he was, when he played the role, he was sometimes a butter thief. He would steal the butter, right? Because in Vrindavan, all the people in the village they kept cows. And they kept cows and were getting a lot of milk. And from the milk they would make the butter. And Krishna would come with the other cowherd boys, sometimes they would come and they would steal the butter. Then why would, what would, he, what would he do with the butter? Do you know? Mary? What would Krishna do with the butter? He will share with his friend and eat the butter. Yeah, some butter he will eat. And sometimes, what else will he do with it? Share with monkeys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll feed the monkeys. There are many monkeys in Vrindavan. Even in the time, uh, yes. even in the time of Krishna, five thousand years ago, many monkeys, and Krishna will feed the butter to the monkeys. The monkeys will enjoy to eat the butter. Okay, and this was so Krishna got an, he got a reputation for a thief, but Krishna is a very because we said Krishna is and he is prophylactic. He cannot be contaminated. We worship him for stealing the butter. Usually if somebody's a criminal, oh, they put to jail, they're, they're fined, they're punished. But Krishna's worshipped because it's all a game for Krishna. Because it's all his butter, right? Krishna's the Supreme Lord. He's a, everything belongs to him. So all the butter is his. He's just playing a game, he's taking the butter for it's to give fun to his friends and everyone. They're having a good time laughing and stealing the butter. The look, Krishna gave pleasure to his pure devotees. All the people with Krishna and Vrindavan, they're all pure devotees. It was for the pleasure of his associates there. So why did Krishna do all these things, all these pastimes? Prabhupada said, this is to attract all these other people, the dry speculators. Dry speculator mean the, the jnanis, they're very dry people, they speculate. And the, then also to attract the acrobats of the hatha yoga. The hatha yogis help them to understand the absolute truth. Okay? Who wants to read next? Mary, you can read. 
Okay, uh, I will read Maharaj. Of the childhood play between the Lord and his playmates, uh, the cowherd boys, eh? the, the screen is not there, Maharaj. Really? You can't see it? Uh, can't see it. Uh, can't see it. Uh, now can see it. Okay. Okay, I'll start again. Of the childhood play between the Lord and his playmates, the cowherd boys, Sukadeva Goswami says in Srimad Bhagavatam, 10.12.11, Itam Satam. Okay, you can read it. Itam Satam. It. Satam Brahma Sukhanu Bhutiya Dasam Gatanam Paradaiwatina Maya Srinam Naradarakena Sakam Vijaro Krita Punya Punja. Wow, very, very good, very good. Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. The personality of Godhead, who is perceived as the impersonal, blissful Brahman by the Dhyanis, who is worshipped as the Supreme Lord by devotees in the mood of servitorship, and who is considered an ordinary human being by Monday people, played with the cowherd boys who had attained their position after accumulating many pious activities. Okay, so th this verse is describing how people see Krishna in different ways. That for the impersonalist, they see God as the Brahman, the impersonal, blissful Brahman. Some bliss is there, but the bliss is not like the bliss of the devotee. The bliss of Brahman is very small. And so some people, they see Krishna like that, they think he is Brahman. They don't understand that he's the supreme Brahman. They think he's just, he's come from the Bra Brahman. The jnani, they think Brahman is the supreme. But his worship, is the Supreme Lord by devotees in the mood of servitorship. So like us, we are servants, we see Krishna as the Lord, we are his servant. He is considered an ordinary human being by mundane people. Ordinary people, they think Krishna is just an ordinary man. And the coward boys who are with him, they are very special. They have done pious activities over many lifetimes. And that's why they're playing with Krishna in his pastimes. They're very advanced devotees, but they've come to be with Krishna in his pastimes. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Thus, the Lord is always engaged in transcendent activities with his spiritual associates in the various relationships of sun. sun or neutrality, dasha, servitorship, sakya, friendship, watasaya, parental affection, and madhurya, conjugal love. Okay, so there are five different kinds of relationships with Krishna. You see, some someone may be in santaras, neutral, means that they, they appreciate the beauty of Krishna, but they don't do any service. They're only, they're attracted by Krishna, but they're not serving. But then dasyaras, one becomes a servant, does service for Krishna. Krishna has servants in Vrindavan, he has servants in Dwarka and in Mathura. And then sakyaras, some people are Krishna's friends, like the cowherd boys. Then Vatsalya, Krishna has his parents, Vasudeva and Devaki. Nanda and Yashoda, even Putana, she came to be Krishna's mother. And then Madhurya, conjugal love, like the gopis or Krishna's wives in Dwarka, like that. Go ahead, read a little more, Mary. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Since it is said that Lord Krishna never lived Rindavana Dharma, one may ask, how he managed the affairs of the creation. This is answered in the Bhagavad Gita 13.14 to 18. The Lord pervades the entire material creation by his plenary path known as the Paraatma 
or super soul. Although the Lord personally has nothing to do with material creation, maintenance and destruction, He causes all these things to be done by His plenary expansion, the Paraatma. Every living entity is known as Atma, soul, and the principal Atma who controls them all is Paraatma, the super soul. Param Atma. Param. Para, Param. Param Atma. Param Atma, yes. Okay, so we hear Krishna Prabhupada is describing that uh, although Krishna personally has nothing to do with creation, there's, there, there are three phases in the material world. There is the creation, the maintenance and the destruction, right? Sankhya Rasmataji. Do you remember who does creation? What? Creation is done by Vishnu Maharaj. Huh. Well, after Vishnu, there's a secondary... The initial creation is done by Vishnu, but the secondary part of creation is not done by Vishnu. Brahma? Yes, Brahma, right. And who maintains? Shiva, the Vishnu. Huh? Vishnu. Vishnu, yes. Vishnu. And who's so who's 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 doing destruction? Shiva. Shiva. Yes, right. Which one is more difficult? Maintenance, my Yes, maintenance is more difficult. That's why Lord Vishnu has to do it. Like, it's easy to create. You know, it's easy to begin family life. It's not easy to maintain it, right? <laughs> to keep it going is difficult. Now, to open a shop or start a business is easy, but to keep it going is difficult. So the maintenance is the difficult part. So the Lord Vishnu does that. So Krishna, he's in Vrindavan Dham. He he lets he has these other expansions, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, and they do the creation, maintenance, and destruction, and they're working under his direction. When Krishna tells them to create, then it begins, and when Krishna tells to annihilate, then Shiva annihilates like that. So it's all ultimately under control of Krishna. Okay, who's next to read? Who have we got? Who has not read yet? I read Maharaj. Okay. This system of god realization is a great science. The materialistic Sankhya Yogis can only analyze and meditate on the 24 factors of the material creation for they have very little information of the Purusha, the Lord. And the impersonal transcendentalists are simply bewildered by the glaring effulgence of the Brahma Jyoti. If one wants to see the Absolute Truth in full, one has to penetrate beyond the 24 material elements and the glaring effulgence as well. Three Isopanishad points toward uh, toward this direction, praying for the removal of the Kiranmaya Patra, the dazzling covering of the Lord. Unless this covering is removed, so one can perceive the real face of the personality of Godhead, factual realization of the absolute truth can never be achieved. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. So Prabhupada's explaining, it's not enough to just get beyond the 24 elements. The material world is made up of the 24 elements. So we may think to get beyond the material world, then we will know God. But Prabhupada said no, because beyond the material world, there's still the, the dazzling effulgence, the Brahma Jyoti, the very bright light, and it's very difficult. This is a glaring effulgence. So we have to go through that effulgence to find the Lord. 
right? The, that effulgence is coming from his body. So we have to, if we want to see the Lord himself, we want to see him face to face, we have to go through that light, that effulgence, which is the Brahman. So that's why they're praying like this. We're praying, oh please, oh my Lord, kindly remove your effulgence and let me see your form. So this is the prayer of the devotee. Go ahead, someone, read. Who's not read? Tanusha Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. The Paramatma feature of the Personality of Godhead is one of three plenary expansions of Vishnu Tattvas, collectively known as the Pur Purusha Avataras. One of these Vishnu Tattvas who is within the universe is known as Shiroda Kashai Vishnu. He is the Vishnu among the three princi principal deities, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And he is the all-pervading Paramatma in each and every individual living entity. The second Vishnu Tattva within the universe is Garboda Kashai Vishnu, the collective super soul within all living entities. Beyond these two is Karana, Karano Dakashai Vishnu, who lies on the Kaushal Ocean. He is the creator of all universe. The yoga system teaches the serious student to meet the Vishnu Tattvas after going beyond the 24 material elements of the cosmic creation. The culture of empiric philosophy helps one realize the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, which is the glaring effulgence of the transcendental body of Lord Sri Krishna. That is the Brahma Jyoti. That the Brahma Jyoti is Krishna's ever effulgence is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 14, text 27, as well as the Brahma Samhita 5.40. Yashya Prabha Prabha Vato Jagat Anda Koti Kotis Asesha Vasu Dati Vibhuti Binam Tat Brahma Nishkalam Anantam Asesha Bhutam Govindam Adi Pursham Tam Aham Bajami In the millions and millions of universe, there are innumerable planets, and each of each and every one of them is different from the others by its cosmic constitution. All of these planets are situated in a corner of Brahma Jyoti. This Brahma Jyoti is but the personal race of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, who, whom I worship. This mantra from Brahma Samhita is spoken from the platform of factual realization of the absolute truth and the mantra of Sri Isopanisar under this question confirms this mantra as a process of realization. The Isopanisar mantra is a simple one described in detail in several mantras of the Mundaka Upanisad 2.2.10 to 12. Okay, okay, let Aribo. Okay, wait. Let's go over this before you go so far. Huh? Let's see. We were hearing about Paramatma. He's one of three features, right? Which feature is he? Brahma, Vishnu or Shiva? Brahma, Vishnu. Yes, right. Paramatma means Vishnu, right? Vishnu form, forearm form. The yogis meditate on the Paramatma, they meditate on that form of Lord Vishnu. So he is known by the name Shirodakashai Vishnu, right? Three Vishnus. This is the, the Vishnu within the, in the heart of all living entities. And one of the three deities, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, they are the God in the material world. This Vishnu is the Shirodakashai Vishnu, Paramatma. And then the second deity is called the Garbodakashai Vishnu. Where is he? 
Do you know? Where will we find Garbhadakashayi Vishnu? In the Kaushal Ocean? No. Not in the Kaushal. That's Karanadakashayi Vishnu. Where will you find Garbhadakashayi Vishnu? Is it the Brahma's uh, navel come from here, Maharaj? Yeah, that's right. Garbhadakashayi Vishnu, he lies in the bottom of the universe. On the he's laying on the Garbhadak ocean, which is at the bottom of the universe. And he's laying on the bed of Anantashesha, and from his navel comes a lotus flower. And from the lotus flower, Brahma takes birth. Right? Yes. Lord Brahma's taking his birth from Vishnu's navel. So the Vishnu, he's laying there in the bottom of the universe. Actually what happens when he enters at the time of creation, Garbhadakishai Vishnu comes into the universe and there's nothing there. So from his body perspiration comes and that perspiration makes an ocean in the bottom of the universe. And he lays down on that water in the bottom of the universe. So he's called the, the collective super soul of all living entities. And he's there at the bottom of the universe. And then, so in every universe, you've got one Garbhadakashai Vishnu, you've got Shiradakashai Vishnu, you've got, he's in everywhere in many different in the hearts of all living entities and and you've got also this karanodakashai vishnu and he's laying on the kajyo ocean right so which one comes first shirodakshai vishnu Maharaj. No. Garbo Dakashai Vishnu Maharaj? No. No, it's the Karano Dakashai Vishnu. Yes, Vishnu. It, it, ha it has to be Karano Dakashai Vishnu. Karano Dakashai Vishnu, he lies on the Kashu Ocean. He's also got Anantashesha for a bed and he's laying on the Kashu Ocean. And from his body, different universes are coming out. All the different universes are coming out from his body. And the, the, all these different universes come out just like uh, sweat comes out from the pores of our skin. And so in the same way from Karana Dakashai Vishnu's body, the different universes are coming out. And then he expands himself into each universe as the Garbhadakashai Vishnu. And he lays in the bottom of the universe and he produces Lord Brahma. And then Lord Brahma, he has to do the work of the creation after that. And then the Lord expands again as Shirodakashai Vishnu in the hearts of all the living entities. Okay, so there are all three Vishnus. He's, this is how they create the world, by the, these Vishnu tattvas. But Prabhupada is saying, we have to go beyond the 24 elements. We have to go beyond that. To, and, and what is beyond the 24 elements? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Come on, Maharaj. Kiran Maya Patra, Maharaj. Yeah, when we go. Krishna, yes. Hare Krishna. What is that? Sorry, I was just what is that, Haran Maya Patra? The dazzling covering of the Lord. Yes, what, but what, 
what, please try to keep that child quiet or keep them away from the mic. Okay, Maharaj, sorry, Maharaj. So it's a Brahma Jyoti. We use the word Brahma Jyoti, the effulgence coming from the body of Krishna. It's the Brahma Jyoti, right? Beyond the 24 elements, it's the Brahma Jyoti. So there are many, many planets in each universe, and in each, there are many universes in the material creation, right? And all of these material planets, they're in a corner, they're in one corner of the Brahma Jyoti, because the, the material creation is just one-fourth compared to the whole creation, right? So the Brahma Jyoti is the effulgence from Krishna, and we worship that. So some people, they think this Brahma Jyoti, they see this as the Supreme. They think this is God. They, say, they think this is the highest, the Brahma Jyoti. So their goal, they want to enter into the Brahma Jyoti, into the light, into the energy. Right? Some people, they call, they call one man told me, he said, I know Krishna not, cannot be God because Krishna has a mother and father. Shiva is God, Shiva is light, you see? So what they're thinking the goal is to merge into the light. But that's not our goal. For devotees, that's not what we want. When you go in the light, there's no activity. If you merge into the light, there's no activity, there's no relationships, there's no variety, there's no activity. It's very boring. So you never be satisfied there. So we want to go beyond the light. And what's beyond the light? Where do we go? Yeah, we want to, we want to see the face of the Lord, right? We want the Lord to, we want to see the Lord. That's what we want, right? So we pray the Ishopanishad mantra is a prayer to the Lord to remove the Brahma Jyoti. So that we can, can see, so that we can see his real face. So you can see from the impersonalism, we're coming to the personalism. We were hearing about more impersonal features earlier, that he walks but he does not walk. That is the impersonal aspect. But now we're hearing about the personal feature. We want to see his face. The devotee is aspiring, he's praying like this. Okay, so then this Brahma Jyoti effulgence is described in detail in several mantras in the Mundaka Upanishad. Mundaka Upanishad, this is another Upanishad. Remember I told you there are many Upanishads? So Mundaka, that's a, one, one of the other Upanishads. It's a short one. In our Ishopanishad we have 18 mantras. In the Mundaka Upanishad, there's only 11 mantras. So it's shorter than the Isha Upanishad. Okay, so we'll just read the translation. Someone like to read that translation? Who's not read yet? Sankiras Maharaji, did you read yet? Yes, Maharaj, I'll read. In the spiritual realm, Beyond the material covering is the unlimited Brahman effulgence, which is free from material contamination. That effulgence within light is understood by transcendentalists to be the light of all lights. In the realm, there is no need of some sunshine, moonshine, fire or electricity for illumination. Whatever illumination appears in the material world is only a reflection of that supreme illumination. That Brahman is in front of, in front and in, in back, in the north, south, east and west, and also overhead and below. In other words, the Supreme Brahman Ipajan spreads throughout both material and spiritual skies. Okay, so we're hearing about the Brahman, you can see nice description, and it sounds very attractive. Oh, there's no need of sunshine, moonshine, fire, 
and everything is self-effulgent, yeah? and it's everywhere, all pervading. But you see, it's not described. There's no variety. There's no activity. There's only the oneness, the light. You're just there doing nothing. And so this is the problem. But for some people, they are attracted. They want to go there. Oh, I want to go. They think this is a goal, the Brahman. Okay, go ahead, Sankhya Ras Maharaj Ji. Yes, Maharaj. Perfect knowledge means knowing Krishna as the root of this Brahman effulgence. This knowledge can be gained from such scriptures as Srimad Bhagavadam, which perfectly elaborates the science of Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavadam, the author Srila Vyasadeva has established that one will describe the Supreme Truth as Brahman, Paramatma oh. or Bhagavan, according to one's realization of Him. Srila Vyasadeva never states that the Supreme Truth is a Jiva, an ordinary living entity. The living entity should never be considered the all-powerful Supreme Truth. If He were the Supreme, He would not need to pray to the Lord to remove His dazzling cover so that the living entity could see His real face. Ah, so Prabhupada is bringing up this point, you see, because some people, they're claiming that we're all God. And they say, they say Brahman is the supreme, and they say when Krishna, when Krishna comes, he comes from the Brahman, and we are also from the Brahman, and they say like that. They say the ultimate, and there's what. So what they're saying is that ordinary living entities are we're all jivas, ordinary living entities that we are the supreme truth. Are we all powerful? Can we be the all powerful supreme truth? No way. We're not all powerful. We're not the supreme truth. Cannot be. If we were, why? And, and we see here in the in this text here that we're praying to the Lord to remove His effulgence. So, if we were the Lord, why would we pray? Because we are that. We don't need to see anything because we know everything. We, we know who we are. We wouldn't have to pray to some. Who are we praying to? It means there's someone above us. When we pray, pray to someone, pray to a person. It means there's someone there who can hear us. And so he's he that person who we're praying to. He is the supreme, and he is the root of the Brahman. Right? We are tiny parts of the Brahman. But He is the root of the Brahman. He is the Supreme Brahman. Okay? Someone like to read a bit more? Who's not read yet? I read Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna. Who is this? The conclusion is that one who has no knowledge of the potency of the Supreme Truth will realize the impersonal Brahman. Similarly, when one realizes the material potency of the Lord but has little or no information of the spiritual potencies, he attained Paramatma realization. Thus, both Brahman and Paramatma realization of the Absolute Truth are partial realization. However, when one realizes the Supreme Personality of God in Sri Krishna in full potency after the removal of the Hiranyamaya Patra, one realizes Vasudevam Sarvam Giti, Lord Sri Krishna, who is known as Vasudeva, is very everything, Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavad. He is Bhagavan, the root and Brahma and Paramatma uh, is branch. Okay, so conclusion. See, different levels of realization. We give the example, just like the sunlight, the sun planet and the sun god. So somebody realizes the sunlight, we see the sunlight, that's easy to understand. But to see the sun planet, oh, oh, the sunlight comes from the sun planet. 
Okay, well, then we see, oh, there's a sun planet. But then, further inside the sun planet, there is the sun god also. So, some people, their realization, they only know about the sunlight. And some people know a bit more, they know the sun planet. That's like the Paramatma. Only the fortunate ones know about the Bhagavan feature. They can understand Krishna, the personality of Godhead. They can know the Sun God. So, the Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, we can hear you loud and clear Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, we were just talking about this Brahman and Paramatma and Bhagavan. Okay, so the, the complete realization is the Bhagavan. Some people only know the Brahman. They're not wrong, but it's not complete. And some people, the yogis, they know the Paramatma. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Gandharvika, Radharani Mataji, are you there? You didn't read yet tonight. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we kept the last paragraph for you to read. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Um, Okay. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 6, text 46 to 47, there is a comparative analysis of the three types of transcendentalists. The worshippers of the impersonal Brahman, Jnanis, the worshippers of Paramatma feature, Yogis, and the devotees of Lord Sri Krishna, Bhattas. It is stated that they are Jnanis, those who have called... Sorry, it is stated that the Jnanis those who have cultivated Vedic knowledge are better than ordinary fruited workers that the yogis are still that the yogis are still greater than the yanis and that among all the yogis those who constantly serve the Lord with all their energies are the topmost. In summary, a philosopher is better than a laboring man. A mystic is superior to a philosopher and of all the mystic yogis he who follows Bhakti Yoga, constantly engaging in the service of the Lord, is the highest. Okay. Three is directs um, us towards this perfection. Thank you. Okay, so right. Prabhupada is summarizing here this these teachings. Comparative analysis of the three levels of trans transcendentalists. They're all transcendentalists, right? They're all on the transcendental platform, but they have different understandings. One is more complete and one is most complete. And so you have, a, you have the, the impersonalists, the jnanis, who know the Brahman, and then you have the yogis, who worship the Paramatma, and the devotees, who are worshipping the Bhagavan feature. So, in the Bhagavad Gita, it's like that. In the sixth chapter, it's compared like that. The, the, uh, the jnanis have cultivated Vedic knowledge. So they're better than the ordinary fruitive worker. Fruitive worker means a karmi, means one who only just wants to enjoy material comforts. They want to go to heaven, they want opulence. That's the, the karmi. So the jnani is better than the karmi, but the yogi is still better than the jnani because the yogi understands about the spiritual energy and about the variety. He understands about the Lord. He's meditating on the Lord. And among all the yogis, you've got some yogis who actually serve the Lord with all their energies. So they're the, that's the bhakta yogi who will do service for the Lord. So in this way Prabhupada gives different examples. A laboring man, a mystic is superior, or a philosopher is better than a, a, a laboring man. Laboring man's karmi again, worker. So philosopher is better. And better than philosopher is the mystic. 
But then better than the mystic is the bhakti yogi, using everything in the service of the Lord. Okay, so this is understanding something about this impersonalism. And to get rid of the impersonalism, we want to see the form of Krishna. Okay, any questions? Anybody? No questions? Okay, then we'll stop here tonight. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki. Thank you so much, Maharaj. We will see you on Sunday. Yeah, go back to Brinda Ki. Jai.